G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, here we go. Tuesday evening here in Australia, Bitcoin dominance down 48%, nearly dropping under it. Ethereum 13.9%, so a little bit under 14%, and gas prices. Good lord, I can't remember the last time I saw them that low. I don't know what's going on. But the market is up 4.1%. So just before this, this was at $2.13 trillion. So we've lost a little bit there. But look, there's a sea of green over the last 24 hours. Uh, there's still, excuse me, there's still some red in the last seven days, but it looks a little bit more promising. Looks like Dogecoin might be kind of bottoming out there. So again, if you want to get into Dogecoin, could be a good position. I'm not saying it is because this is just a quick seven day chart, but it does look like it's kind of bottomed out there a little bit. So, you know, if Dogecoin's going to a dollar, like people say, and I'm again, I'm not saying it is. It's never financial advice. I guess that's, you know, you can basically sort of triple your money there if that pans out. Again, for me, I'm not too sure. I don't think I want to get into Dogecoin. I'll, I want to invest in, you know, fundamentally good projects generally. You know, and I don't think the real big crazy gains can be made from Dogecoin anymore, anymore in all fairness. I think, you know, Dogecoin will, you know, it might hit a dollar, but I don't know if it'll go much over a dollar. So a 3x, uh, you know, in something that's fundamentally, you know, not really doing a whole lot. Yeah, I, I just don't know. So for me, I won't be. But look, it could be a good opportunity there, a trading opportunity. And, you know, if you really love Doge and you think it's going to a dollar, well, then, you know, you can triple your money so something to consider but anyway that's not really my kind of thing but look again the 24 hours look there's just it's almost a sea of green so let's have a look you know what's done the best in the last 24 hours waves phantom again pirate chain good lord I, don't know. Oh, I hope there's something really good about pirate chain and it's literally not just a silly meme coin that people are going to get massively burnt by but i mean look at these gains nearly 50 percent 35 percent almost 30 percent 25 percent again not quite just under it 20 percent 20 percent xrp came back with a vengeance look out uh 18 percent polygon still going up 15.8 percent uh holo Sirecoin, kasama i mean lots of really really good gains there what about the losses though? It didn't look like there were many at all. And yesterday they really weren't many. They were very minor. I mean, Solana, we talked about that yesterday. It's done so well. So there's a bit of a pullback there. But really, one, you know, 5% loss almost. One sort of 2% loss. And then everything else, all the other losses in the top 100, you know, they're less than a percent. I mean, you know, 0.2%, 0.7%. That really is not much at all. So things look pretty good on that front. Now let's get over to the Bitcoin chart because we have to have a look at this. Again, we got this really good bounce from, you know, sort of the 100-day moving average, and that was great. And it was a green candle, and I said, you know, I was worried it would roll over. Well, it looks like, again, here we are. It's, you know, 7 o'clock in the morning, UTC time. So this looks pretty good at the moment, but it's, you know, it's early. We'll have to wait and see. For me... I really need Bitcoin to kind of get above here, really above kind of the $60,000 level before I think we're really going to have a crack at the $64,000 level. Until then, I am, you know, somewhat concerned that maybe we get rejected from the 50-day moving average and could, could roll over. And again, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. I'm just, you know, I, I'm always trying to hedge my bets. Again, like I always have a plan of, you know, like my bullish plan, all right, this is what I, you know, am hoping will happen. And if that happens, then great, congratulations. And, you know, is that a cash out zone or something like that? But then I've got always the other plan, which is, okay, if this doesn't happen and it goes the other way, then what? You know, am I at the... You know, am I at the point where I need to, you know, sell out and just accept a loss or something like that? Or can I hold through it? Or is it another buying opportunity? So that's why I always look at both sides. You know, I could sit here and tell you everything's going to the moon and it's never going to end. And, you know, Dogecoin's going to go to $100 and, you know, <laughs> the most random crazy stuff like that. But, you know, I'll... I'm not here to basically blow smoke up everyone's backside or anything like that. I'm here to just, I like chatting about cryptocurrencies and I like to give my honest opinion. And so my honest opinion is I'm waiting to see if we can break through this 50 day moving average. And if we don't and get rejected by it, I think we might be coming back down and testing here. And again, look, we could go lower. I'm, 
I'm not going to be surprised if Bitcoin ever comes down and bounces off this 200 day moving average, you know, in the at least kind of, you know, short to medium term future. But look, in the long term future, I think it's definitely possible that happens at some stage. But I just don't think it's going to do that at the moment. But look, I've been wrong before and I'll be wrong again. So for me, I'm waiting to see what happens when we get to the 50 day moving average. You know, do we again, you know, now start to use that as support again or does it become a bit of resistance? And again, do we go to a, a more of a downside? Because, you know, it's a pretty good correction. But again, most of our good corrections generally lead to good upside, good correction, good upside, good correction, good upside, good correction, pretty good upside. So, you know, that's the path it's been taking for a while now. You know, is that just going to continue? Well, we all hope so. And look, I'm one of those people. I hope it does too. I don't mind 30% corrections as long as, you know, it's not the first 30% of a 60, 70, 80% <laughs> correction, you know what I mean? So that, that's kind of where I am at. So again, just waiting to see what happens. Like I said, I'm buying the dip, you know, I don't think we're at the peak yet. So really I'm happy to invest in pretty much anything. You know, if I'm going to invest in something, I do want to come and read the charts and kind of hope that I'm not, you know, again, buying this, to then, you know, suffer for two weeks, you know, to get down to here before it goes up because it's a painful two weeks you know or whatever it takes sometimes three weeks sometimes months whatever it may be so I really want to have a look at the charts and kind of you know try and buy in here and then you know it's all just upside from there you know what I mean that's what I'm kind of looking for but anyway that's the charts that's what I'm looking at now you know where my head's at you know let me know your thoughts down below you know do you think that uh, this is you know 47k was the bottom or do you think you know we could sort of roll over do you think we might get rejected by the uh, 50 day moving average or do you think that becomes the new support again which is what it's been for quite some time all right here's the biggest story sort of going on later seems like Tesla sold some Bitcoin and you know there's people up in arms and all the rest of it you know before we kind of get too up in arms Remember they bought back at around about 37,000. It's now six, it was about 60 something thousand. They basically doubled their money. Can you blame them because they sold a little bit? And that's literally all it is. It's not a little bit to me and you because they bought so much. They bought, I think, $1.5 billion worth or something. They sold 10% of their Bitcoin. They need to. That their company is about, you know, making money and staying liquid and all the rest of it. The company is not simply about buying as much Bitcoin as we can and never selling any of it. I know Michael uh, Saylor said he's going to do that, and that's great. That works for him. But most other companies, they're going to sell some of it here and there, you know what I mean? And they're going to try and sell the tops and buy the bottoms and all the rest of it. And again, we'll have to wait and see how you know true Michael Saylor is to his word, that they never sell any of their Bitcoin, you know? And again, even if they do, I'm not going to hate on them. Uh, they're entitled to do whatever they want. But there has been a lot of people that are like, I can't believe Tesla sold their Bitcoin and Elon sold their Bitcoin. Well, Elon put out a tweet. He's got personal Bitcoin, didn't sell any. Just Tesla sold 10%. And again, they got to remain liquid and they've got to have cash. So fair enough. The, the world is still ruled by cash. Whether you like it or not, that hasn't changed and isn't going to change you know, in the next kind of four to six weeks or anything like that. It's probably going to take a couple of years, if not another decade or more before that changes. But let's go on. So Tesla Motors sold a portion of its Bitcoin holdings in the first quarter of 2021, generating net uh, proceeds of $2.72 million. Remember, they invested over a billion dollars, so they've only got a little bit of their money back. That's all it is. Now, in a 30-page slide deck accompanying its quarterly financial results, remember, they're a publicly traded company, so they've, you know, they've got people that they need to answer to, Tesla noted a $101 million positive impact as a result of its Bitcoin sales. So they made money for their clients and for the company. No one can, you know, bash them for that kind of stuff. Again, $1.5 billion, there you go, dollars worth of BTC is what they bought. And they got back a fifth that's what they got back, a fifth of what they sort of sold, you know, 0.3 uh, times 5, 15, oh, 1.5, I guess it'd be. So yeah, they got a fifth back. All good, no worries, well done to you. I'm happy that they sold the Bitcoin because uh, then there was Bitcoin out there for people to buy. Unfortunately, I didn't buy any, but you know, 
congratulations to them. I don't hold no grudges. They didn't, you know, just dump it all or anything like that. They simply got some of their money back, which they're completely entitled to do. All right. Leading banks over in China. Uh, they're pushing the digital yuan over things like Alipay and WeChat. So, you know, look out. Some shots have been fired. <laughs> Alipay and WeChat might be threatened by the foray of the e yuan as major Chinese banks push for its usage in the upcoming shopping festival. So six of the biggest banks in China's uh, Megapolisus, uh, I think that's supposed to be Metropolisus, Shanghai, are supporting the digital yuan ahead of a May 5th shopping, shopping festival. So again, you know, Alipay and WeChat, really, really big over there. But it seems like, you know, the digital yuan is getting ready to kind of take over. And whether that, you know, eliminates things like Alipay and WeChat or not, we'll have to wait and see but it's probably definitely going to eat into some of their profits and things like that and will likely just kind of change the way they do business in the future a little bit. Maybe it doesn't at all. We'll have to wait and see, but it seems like China is really pushing ahead with that yuan pretty fast. And again, we're really still waiting for the first country to come out and say, here's the final product. We're really ready to roll. And again, I brought a story a little while ago. I think it was somewhere over in the Bahamas, uh, the sand dollar or something like that is likely the closest one uh, to really being uh, finished and rolled out. They think that will be the first. But again, time will tell. All right. JP Morgan, eh? Bashed Bitcoin for so long. It was crap. It was this. It's a bubble. It's going to die. It's going to do this. It's going to do that. And particularly Jamie Dimon, he'd fire anyone working for JP Morgan that was, you know, trading in Bitcoin and all the rest of it. Well, look where we are now. JP Morgan is reportedly joining the Bitcoin bandwagon as the giant bank plans to offer an actively managed Bitcoin fund to private investors. Now, I'm pretty sure they're only uh, putting it out there to its really rich investors, uh, but I, I might, that might be wrong. That might be another bank I'm thinking of. But either way, I mean, they generally deal with quite wealthy people. But, you know, what a turn of events from literally only maybe a year ago. It's, you know, it's going to zero. It's a scam. It's fake. And, you know, all this. And now they're on board. Look, better late than never. Congratulations, JP Morgan. And, you know, hopefully... Jamie Dimon can, you know, eat a bit of humble pie and all the rest of it. But, you know, again, better late than never. They're still going to be considered one of the sort of early adopters anyway. Uh, you know, we haven't got the full mainstream of the world on board yet. It's just the big institutions. And they usually get into things long before, you know, the general public. It's not to say none of the public get in before them. And that's what we kind of are. If we've been here for a while now, then we're the guys that beat, you know, the big players so you know you should feel pretty good about that uh congratulate yourselves and pat you on the back but you know ride this bitcoin thing you know for the next 10 years and then really i'd say in 10 years time you know i think it's going to be around about there when the whole world is into it and using it i'm not saying dump all your bitcoin and get out i'm just saying the real exponential growth from it is probably already done then it'll be time to start looking for the next big thing it's not that there won't be any money to be made in Bitcoin. I think it continues to go up just because of the scarcity and all the rest of it. But I just think those really big exponential gains will slowly start to diminish over time. So again, get that Bitcoin now is, you know, my personal advice, not financial advice. I can't offer you financial advice. And just buy it and hold. It's likely no matter what price you buy it at, at the moment, that in five to ten years time, it's worth a whole lot more. But that kind of stands with most investments, provided nothing drastic uh, happens and changes that kind of, you know, that kind of space. So again, something could change the whole cryptocurrency space at some time. And, you know, again, there's some glitch that was never found that's possible, but I'd just say it's unlikely. You know, 12 years later, it's, you know, stood the test of time. I don't think it's going anywhere. But again, I've, you know, gone off uh, subject a little bit. JP Morgan, now they're even on the bandwagon. All right. NFL player to convert the rest of his salary into Bitcoin. So following Russell Kong's lead, the Chiefs tight end will trade his NFL earnings for Bitcoin, but he's going in all in for the 2021 season. Woof, that's pretty brave. So the Chiefs will not pay Culkin directly in cryptocurrency. Instead, they will pay him weekly in US dollars, and that amount will then be converted to Bitcoin using the mobile payments app Strike. Culkin's base salary for the year is 920000 
So, um, yeah, I'm wondering if it's just his base salary or is there, you know, other bits of money that are going in. But, you know, Russell or Kung, he's probably done quite well because I think he got into Bitcoin, you know, fairly early in this sort of cycle anyway. You know, you know if you're getting into Bitcoin now at 60000 you just have to be prepared that we might go lower uh, and stay lower for quite some time. Again, I, th I think over, you know, you know, in four years' time, the money, you know, that he's put into it will probably do really, really well. But it's just that, you know, you can't have those massive gains and he is coming in fairly sort of late to a cycle. It's not that there won't be any profits to be made from here. You know, uh, again, I think Bitcoin's probably going to go to somewhere between sort of 150 and 300,000. So you can, you know, double sort of triple your money possibly. Again, never financial advice. But it's also possible that we only maybe go up to 80,000 and have a really big correction and go back down to, you know, sort of 8,000, 10,000 or something. And that would hurt when you're bought in at, you know, 50, 60,000. But hey, good on him for having his beliefs. And again, maybe he can ride out, you know, the next, you know, sort of two, three, four years or whatever it might take, you know, to be back in profit. All right, last story. Iran authorizes banks and currency exchanges to use cryptocurrencies to pay for imports. This is big. So the Central Bank of Iran has authorized banks and currency exchanges to use cryptocurrencies mined by licensed crypto miners in the miners in the country to pay for imports. So generally, uh, there's a bit of Bitcoin mining going off over in Iran, and look, there could be other coins as well. But very, very interesting that they've said that's the way to pay for. Um, you know, imports and things like that because they can't really pay uh, with their own dollars and they can't use US dollars. There's a lot of sanctions and bans and things on them. So this is their way around it. So pretty smart, uh, you know, they're mining their own cryptocurrencies and they're finding ways, you know, around some of the, again, restrictions and levies and all the things that they've got. Uh, so, yeah, can't blame them. It'll be interesting to see how it works for them. So the central bank says that lenders and licensed currency exchange offices have been notified about the regulatory framework for crypto payments. So Iran, you know, if they really get into Bitcoin, <laughs> it'd be so funny because, again, there's all these restrictions and treaties and everything that's really, you know, made it hard for them to sort of operate uh, internationally. They get big into Bitcoin and suddenly they be, could become, excuse me, sorry, you know, a, you know, sort of world financial powerhouse, possibly. Again, no one knows, but that would be very, very interesting considering, you know, kind of the predicament that they're in now uh, with, you know, places like America and other things like that. But all right, look, that's it from me. Again, uh, worked today, so it's a late video. Uh, I have a few days off, so hopefully I'll bring them to you early and have a little bit more content. But stay safe. Be kind to one another. Everyone should be on that game train at the moment. So congratulations and I'll see you next time.